Putin, uh, no surprise, uh, winning the election, but there certainly are a lot of questions surrounding it uh, as we come out of this uh, result. Uh, tell us really what's going on there in Moscow right now. Uh, well, for Putin, it's uh, certainly a big uh, victory in his view. He wanted to demonstrate that he had the support of the bulk of the population and organized the vote uh, in such a way to deliver that result and came out with even a uh, higher result, about 64 percent of the vote, a little higher even than exit polls and some uh, other pollsters had forecast going in. So the Kremlin's certainly trying to portray this as a big mandate and evidence that the uh, crowds who demonstrated against him in Moscow are a minority and don't represent the country. Uh, and he moved quickly to try to uh, to meet with the uh, some of the losing candidates today and to try to to to, to reach out to some of the demonstrators. Uh, on the opposition side, the big test comes in a couple of hours as a uh, demonstration is uh, scheduled here in downtown Moscow. Security is quite tight, lots of police out, uh, and it'll be the first uh, uh, post-election test of the opposition's ability to continue mobilizing people out you know, into the street to protest. And Greg, is that a big question? You know, you've had this election, uh, 64 percent. Uh, is, is that the big question, whether or not any kind of opposition movement of size can sustain itself, given that Putin has now uh, won six more, uh, six more years as the president? Yeah, that's really the big question is what, what do they do next? Much of this movement was spontaneous. These were people who, into, who organized through the Internet to the extent they organized at all. And so it's, it's hard, to, you know, they're not following individual leaders yet. There's, you know, not a clear leader of the movement. So it's not quite clear really where this energy and emotion is going to go. There was certainly a lot of focus and attention among civil society on the vote. A lot of people volunteered to be poll observers uh, to, to try to watch the vote. And, and, and uh, many reported uh, irregularities and, and uh, what looked like uh, vote fraud. Uh, so it'll be a, a really interesting to see both tonight and then a, a, on the weekend when we're, there's another demonstration scheduled to see whether this protest activity continues or whether the Kremlin's successful in sort of uh, channeling it and, and, and muffling it by essentially ignoring the demands. And assuming that uh, that uh, nothing changes, of course, for the outcome, what does this mean now going forward uh, with the relations for the U.S.? Uh, there's been some contentious rhetoric, I know, when, during the campaign and uh, before the election. Um, tell us a little bit about what we, you think will, go, will happen going forward now that uh, he has won. Yeah, foreign policy is certainly going to be a key test area for uh, how Putin uh, reacts. During the campaign, they uh, played the anti-Western and really anti-American card very hard, attacking the new American ambassador, for example, and blaming the State Department for inspiring the demonstrations and paying the demonstrators. Uh, so uh, the question is whether that uh, fades away after the uh, uh, now that uh, the victory has been assured. Uh, the U.S. diplomats and others we've talked to suggest that they've been getting quiet signals from the Russians that, in fact, that was just electoral politics and they want to go back to business and usual, as usual on the, uh, uh, the reset with the U.S. Uh, uh, we'll see how that goes uh, uh, over the next couple of months, however. Then. The first test is really in uh, Chicago at the NATO summit just after yeah. G8 and, in May. And, Greg, very quickly, you know, you talked about the, the claims of irregularities. Do those go anywhere at this point, either within Russian society or from complaints from the outside? Uh, no, usually they, I mean, if, if, if uh, history is any guide on that, uh, internally the authorities say we'll go to court and they tend to get the people who, who bring these uh, cases tend to get the runaround and then wind up uh, nowhere. The uh, uh, Western observers, the European observers who uh, have looked at the uh, over the years that came again and reported that the vote was unfair, but the Kremlin tends to ignore that and Western capitals ultimately note that, but they have to deal with the, uh, the Kremlin leaders so they don't have the option to uh, view the elections as illegitimate or somehow uh, uh, make a substantial, have really you know, shift relations in any way.